was the first martyr of Christianity? Stephen, a devout follower of Jesus and one of the early leaders of the Christian community in Jerusalem, holds the distinction of being the first martyr of Christianity. The account of Stephen's martyrdom is recorded in the book of Acts, chapters 6 to 7. Stephen was chosen along with six other men to serve as a deacon, tasked with overseeing the distribution of food to widows in the early Christian community. However, Stephen's ministry extended beyond practical service to proclaiming the gospel with great boldness and conviction. His preaching aroused the opposition of religious authorities who accused him of blasphemy and false teachings. In his defense before the Sanhedrin, Stephen delivered a powerful speech recounting Israel's history and the prophetic witness to Jesus as the promised Messiah. Enraged by his words, the religious leaders stoned Stephen to death, making him the first Christian martyr. Stephen's steadfast faith, forgiveness of his persecutors, and vision of Jesus at the moment of his death left a profound impact on the early church, inspiring subsequent generations of believers to remain faithful even in the face of persecution and opposition. What was the name of the city where Jesus was born? Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a small town located approximately six miles south of Jerusalem in the region of Judea. Bethlehem holds significant historical and religious significance in Judaism and Christianity as the birthplace of King David, Israel's greatest monarch, and the prophesied birthplace of the Messiah. According to the New Testament Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Jesus' birth in Bethlehem fulfills Old Testament prophecies, affirming his Davidic lineage and messianic identity. The city of Bethlehem, meaning house of bread, in Hebrew, served as the humble setting for Jesus' miraculous incarnation, celebrated by angels, shepherds, and wise men from the East. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem represents God's fulfillment of his promises to redeem humanity, reconcile the world to himself, and inaugurate his kingdom of peace and salvation. How many days and nights did it rain during the Great Flood? The Great Flood, a cataclysmic event of divine judgment recorded in the book of Genesis, lasted for 40 days and 40 nights, inundating the earth with torrential rainwaters and submerging all terrestrial life beneath its floodwaters. The account of the Great Flood, found in Genesis 6-9, describes how God, grieved by humanity's wickedness and corruption, resolved to destroy all living creatures with a global deluge while preserving the righteous through the ark constructed by the righteous Noah. The rainwaters poured forth upon the earth for forty consecutive days and nights, covering the highest mountains and eradicating all life except for those aboard the ark. The duration of the floodwaters lasted for 150 days before receding and allowing the ark to come to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The Great Flood serves as a potent symbol of divine judgment, cleansing, and renewal, offering theological insights into God's justice, mercy, and covenantal faithfulness. Which prophet was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind? Elijah, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind in a miraculous event recorded in 2 Kings 2 verses 1 to 18. Elijah's ascent to heaven, often referred to as his translation or rapture, marks the culmination of his prophetic ministry and serves as a testament to his unique relationship with God. As Elijah and his disciple Elisha journeyed from Gilgal to Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan River, they were accompanied by groups of prophets who foretold Elijah's impending departure. At the Jordan River, Elijah struck the waters with his mantle, parting them, allowing him and Elisha to cross on dry ground. Upon reaching the opposite bank, a fiery chariot and horses of fire appeared, separating Elijah from Elisha, and Elijah was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind, leaving behind his mantle for Elisha. Elijah's translation into heaven symbolizes his vindication as a faithful prophet of God and the continuity of God's prophetic witness in Israel. Who was the first woman created according to the Bible? According to the biblical narrative in the book of Genesis, the first woman created was Eve, who was formed by God from Adam's rib as a companion and helper suitable for him. Eve's creation is depicted in Genesis 2 verses 18 to 25, where God, having observed Adam's solitary state, declares, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. In response to Adam's need for companionship, God causes Adam to fall into a deep sleep, takes one of his ribs, and forms Eve from it. Adam awakens to behold Eve, declaring, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called, woman, for she was taken out of man. The creation of Eve from Adam's rib underscores the intimate relational bond between man and woman, their shared humanity, and their mutual dependence on one another.
Eve's role as the mother of all living beings, her participation in the fall, and her enduring significance in biblical and theological discourse make her a central figure in the narrative of creation and redemption.